everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends, and in today's case it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful Japanese macaque. This is a very special listener episode dedicated to Mia. Thank you so much for taking the time to write in, and I hope you enjoy your very own episode. To request an animal, you can just go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and click on the Animal Request tab. For one extra exclusive episode a week, and to vote on which animal we cover next once a month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts, or just click the link in the description. The nature sounds in this episode are courtesy of George Vlad, who goes around the world recording some of the most remote places on Earth. His YouTube is in the description, and I encourage you to check him out. And now we are going to begin winding down a little bit. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, you know what I am about to ask of you. I have three primary exhortations for you. The first thing I encourage you to do is to put on a pair of very warm boots. We are going to be needing those for where we are going today. And the second thing I ask is that you notice perhaps where you are carrying some tension. It might help to start from the very bottom of your feet and work your way up to the head. You might have tension in the shoulders, in the neck. Everybody here is different, but my exhortation to you is the same. Do your best to relax whatever you are tensing. You can even imagine some jello. Choose a color you like, red, yellow, green, and do your best to do an Oscar award-winning impression of it. It is really hard to relax when we are stiff as a board. And the last thing I encourage you to do is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me onto the island of Honshu in Japan, where the Japanese macaque resides. We have been to Japan a couple of times on the show, and today we are entering some of the snowy environments that Japan has to offer. And what we are looking for here on this Japanese island is a monkey. It is possible that you, like myself, did not know that there were even any monkey species in Japan. The Japanese macaque is the only native monkey species found in Japan, but they are also the single only monkey species in the world that are found this far north. No other monkey is found as far north as the Japanese macaque. These monkeys often live in freezing cold temperatures. Many of the other monkeys on the show that we have covered enjoy very temperate climates, ones that are very warm and forgiving, but not in the case of the Japanese macaque. This creature, also known as the snow monkey, is stocky and medium-sized with a relatively short tail. Many of the primates we have covered have tails that can wrap around in a prehensile fashion that are very long, but not in their case. The male macaques are going to be about twice as large as females, making them quite easy to identify. Males will average about 22 inches in length, which is around 57 centimeters, and 25 pounds, just over 11 kilos in weight. The females will average 20 and a half inches, or about 52.3 centimeters in length, while being around 18.5 pounds, or 8.4 kilos in weight. Their tails are going to add an extra 2.5 to 4 inches, about 7 to 12 centimeters, they will live from between 22 to 27 years, though the highest recorded age was of a wild female that lived to the age of 32. If you have not already indulged your curiosity and searched up an image of them, I can do my best with the help of these articles to describe them for you. Sometimes it's a fun game to see how well you are imagining what the real thing looks like. 
Once you Google image search them, you can compare what did you have in your head versus what does it really look like. In the winter time, they will have a very heavy coat that acts as an insulator. Given their environment and how cold and snowy it is, an insulating coat of fur is just what they need. They have faces that are absent of fur, just like us, and they have expressive eyes just like many other monkey species we have covered already. They have pouches in their cheeks that they will be using for food storage, a very important mechanism for the harsh climate of this Japanese island. As they grow older, their faces and their bottoms will become red in color. And all macaques have what are called opposable thumbs, just like us. The distinction of opposable thumbs is a very relevant one. The reason that is there is because many creatures have thumbs, but they do not do the action of opposition. If you take your thumb and press it into your pinky finger, what you are doing is called opposition. And when you perform the flexion of all of your fingers and opposition of your thumb at the same time, you can grab objects. And that is exactly what the macaque can do as well. In terms of their locomotion, meaning their movement, they will use all four limbs to get around, what researchers will refer to as quadrupedal movement. They do have the ability to walk on their hind legs, they are not anatomically restricted in that way, but they will only do it if they are holding something in their forelimbs, for example. Now, it is important to consider that while we are here in the snowy parts of this Japanese island, the Japanese macaque is found on a few different Japanese islands, and there are great variations in their latitude and altitude, and because of these variables, this creature will live in a variety of habitats. And so, for example, the southernmost end of their distribution will include habitats of subtropical forests and other similar temperate areas, while in its most northernmost ranges, they will be in subarctic forests. And between these two extremes, there are both the warm and cool temperate forests. The highest elevation where Japanese macaques have been found is 3,180 meters high or about 10,433 feet. And in these high altitude or latitude areas, the snow is often very deep, having been recorded to 2 to 3 meters deep during the winter time. And so some of these Japanese macaques are really living in extreme conditions. And these creatures, regardless of their habitat, will indulge in more of an omnivorous diet, meaning they eat both plant and animal material. It is often the reality that those animals which are least picky are the ones noted to be omnivorous. They will eat fungi, invertebrates, ferns, soil, and other parts of plants, fruits, leaves, seeds... What's most important to them, especially for the Japanese macaques in the region that we are exploring today, is to store as much fat as possible. It is harder to store fat when you are very picky about what you eat. Macaques will form very tight-knit social groups, characterized by that familiar dominance hierarchy. Their average group size is about 41 individuals, but there can be as few as 10 to as many as 161 individuals. These differences depend on the available food, it depends on the habitat type, and that is why such a large range exists. And so they're going to be doing most of their eating, most of their bathing during the daytime. The Japanese macaque is a diurnal creature as opposed to being nocturnal. When they do sleep during the nighttime, they will frequently sleep in trees, but they will also sleep on the ground or on fallen trees or flat rocks. These monkeys seem not to be picky about anything, neither about what they eat or about where they sleep. Now, one of the reasons you might know about this creature is that they love to bathe in those hot thermal pools. During the icy winters that they have to endure here, these natural pools allow them to keep warm. Now, in this article, it states that these swims in these thermal pools are actually a learned behavior. 
In 1963, a young female snow monkey went into a hot spring in the Nagano Mountains to get some soybeans that had been thrown in by the researchers. These researchers were attempting to ensure they did not go into any local orchards and indulge themselves there. Once this one snow monkey went into this warm water, she seemed to enjoy the warmth of it and soon enough, other young monkeys joined her too. And at first, it was only the younger macaques and their mothers who would go into the water. But over many years, eventually this caught on in this little society of monkeys, and the rest of the troop took the plunge too. Now after incidences like these, they began to invade nearby spas and hot tubs built for humans. And once this began to happen, government officials decided to build them their own hot springs. There was another development in a separate society of Japanese macaques where researchers provisioned one troop by putting sweet potatoes along the beach. One older female macaque decided to, instead of brushing the sand off with her hand like the others, she decided to wash her sweet potato in water. Over time, potato washing became the new thing among this troop. And you can imagine why they would taste pretty good, because they were washing their sweet potatoes in salt water. This of course enhanced the flavor a little bit, and they enjoyed that a lot. I find that pretty cool. They are very capable climbers, as can be expected. Of course, they sleep mostly in trees, so they need a way to get into the tree to begin with. In the colder environments, such as the one we are in now, they can often be seen snuggling together and sleeping together in an effort to stay warm. They will not really choose one location to go back to over and over again, but they will change the sites that they sleep in on a daily basis. In terms of the group dynamics of the Japanese macaque, as we learned earlier, there is a hierarchy. The troop is ruled by an alpha male and an alpha female. There will often be many more females than males, about three to one, and there is a kind of royal lineage happening. The hierarchy is inherited and passed from mother to infant, and so the alpha male is responsible for fathering the offspring of the group, as well as the responsibility of providing protection and leading the movement of the group where they are going to sleep and where they are going to spend their time. The males will typically leave their troops around the time that they can have children themselves. So males will go to a new group every two to four years, usually during the mating season. And in terms of the position of alpha male and alpha female, these are not just titles that do not provide any extra benefits. Those who are higher ranking get first access to food, certain privileges as regards their social rank, there will be differences in protection and support and food sharing. There is also the mechanism of co-feeding when a dominant individual in the social hierarchy will give food access to an individual of the troop that is subordinate or lower in the ranking. This is often referred to as a kind of altruistic behavior. The younger macaques will spend a great deal of their time playing together. This includes familiar activities to us, like making snowballs and rolling them along the ground to make them bigger. They seem to do this just for the fun of it. And seeing as they live in these large groups, they are obviously quite social animals, and they have many different vocalizations that they utilize to communicate with one another. Researchers currently have six documented categories of vocalizations. These categories are peaceful, aggressive, defensive, and warning. The other two vocalizations are specific to the infants and to females. And now let us go to the name of the animal. And so the name macaque is used to describe an East Indian monkey, and it began to be used in that way in 1757. Unsurprisingly, it comes from the French word macaque, and that is an import from Portuguese, macaco, which means monkey. And that is actually a Bantu word that was brought from Africa to Brazil. So our English descriptor actually comes from a Bantu word. 
And now let us move on to the review portion of the show. This review was written by Kieran, who wrote all the way from the United States of America, and Kieran writes, Beach Sounds did the trick for a long time until I saw a sticker of the podcast and a friend explained it and now I religiously listen to it while trying to sleep. Thank you, Kieran, for taking the time to leave this review. I am so happy that you enjoy the show and that you happen to stumble upon it by a sticker. I'm so happy that you can join me every week and the same goes for all of you listening. If the show helps you at all, leaving a review is one of the biggest things that you can do. It helps the show get better, it helps more people find it, and so I appreciate all of your reviews. To request your very own animal for a future episode, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab. If you would like to reach out to me for any other reason, you can do so by sending an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or by going to the Relax With Animal Facts Instagram page and sending a message there. If you like the show and want the opportunity to vote on next episodes and get access to exclusive content, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts. The ambiance that was used in this episode is courtesy of George Vlad. I have left his YouTube in the description and I encourage you all to go check him out. The facts that were used in this episode come from animalia.bio, factanimal.com, neprimateconservancy.org, and etimonline.com. As all of you know, I love any kind of monkey or primate and I am so excited that I have gotten to learn about the macaque. I hope all of you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode with the next animal. Take care. <laughs>